You've probably come across the term API endpoint while working with APIs, whether in docs, tutorials, or while building something yourself. It's a fundamental part of how APIs work, and in this video, I'll break down what an API endpoint actually is, how it fits into the bigger picture of API communication, and how you can start using one using a real example from Postman's public API. So let's start with the basics. An API or application programming interface is a way for two systems, usually your application and a remote server, to communicate with each other. When you use an API, you're making a request to a server, asking it to do something or give you back some data. But that request has to go somewhere specific. It needs an address. And that address is called an endpoint. An API endpoint is simply a URL that represents a specific resource or functionality in an API. Think of it like sending a letter. The API is the post office, and the endpoint is the address you're sending your letter to. Without it, your request has nowhere to go. Let's use a real example, api.getpostman.com slash collections. This is an API endpoint provided by Postman. When you send a request to this URL, you're asking the Postman API to return a list of all the collections in your account. In this case, the base URL is api.getpostman.com, and then slash collections is the specific path that points to the data you're interested in. So in this case, your collections. This endpoint is part of Postman's public API, which lets you programmatically access things like your environments, workspaces, and more. Behind the scenes, here's what's happening when you call that endpoint. You send an HTTP GET request to this endpoint and you include an API key for authorization because the server needs to verify who you are and that you have access to the data. The server processes your response, pulls the relevant data from its system, and then sends back a response, usually in JSON format. That response includes the collections you have access to along with metadata like names, IDs, and links. Every endpoint does something different depending on the path and the HTTP method you use. For example, if you are using this post method and you hit send here, it's gonna create a collection for you. And you can see that metadata down here. It's important to remember that endpoints often require additional information. Sometimes that means query parameters to limit your results or an API key for authentication. And when you're working with secure APIs, you never want to hard code that key into your code or expose it in a query string. A best practice is to store your API key securely using something like Postman Vault. This helps keep your credentials safe while still allowing you to work with the API. To sum it up, an API endpoint is just a specific URL where your request goes to access or modify some data. It's the access point to a particular resource or action inside an API. In our example, api.getpostman.com slash collections is the endpoint for retrieving your Postman collections and also for creating new Postman collections. And once you understand how to read API docs and identify the right endpoint, you can start building all kinds of applications that talk to the web. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe this video for more tutorials just like this one.